What role do anthropologists play in solving crime? Let's ask our expert. In a situation where remains are found and there's no known identity to the individual, the anthropologists would be called in to use their expertise in dealing with the human skeletal anatomy and with human variation in order to study the remains, such as studying the skull, and to build a biological profile of the individual. The profile is then given to the police as critical evidence, and they can then continue on with their investigation, knowing who the set of remains actually represents. I was hired as a contractor for the RCMP, and there was a large-scale investigation going on. What they needed was a number of people who were highly qualified in being able to distinguish human remains from non-human remains, similar to what an uh, anthropologist would do at a mass disaster scene. A physical anthropologist has expertise in dealing not only with recent remains, but dealing with historic remains. And often it's the most important thing is to determine the recency of the remains and how they fit in with the general context of a crime scene. In determining who the person was, you want to know the sex of the person, the age of the person, the general stature of the person, and you want to know their biological ancestry. The skull is the most diagnostic area for building a biological profile of the human skeleton. So when you look at the, at the skull, the first thing that you want to do is determine the sex of the person. And in doing that, there are certain telltale features that you want to look at. First of all, there are the brow ridges. Normally on males, they tend to be much more robust than on women. And then at the rear of the skull, you have this protuberance or this bun, a occipital bun, that comes out of the back of the skull. And typically in males, it's much more robust as well because it serves as a muscle attachment for muscles of the jaw. The cranial sutures, the older the person gets, they begin, begin to fuse together very tightly. And so that gives you a good indication based on the extent of the fusion, the actual age of the individual. The teeth, you can tell whether the individual is adult or not by the eruption of the third molars. DNA is actually preserved much better in teeth than in bones. And from bones, DNA is a difficult thing. It's something that we would only normally try to extract if we were dealing with ancient remains. When you're dealing with the forensic context, you hope for other types of evidence like soft tissue, skin, muscle, or hair, of course, which are much more uh, useful for DNA analysis.